recently there's been a lot of talk that the U.S. may be facing recession soon, or at least a severe slowdown. And, I mean, the industrial PMIs have not been good. They have been pretty shaky. And, of course, that's partly because of declining exports to China because of trade tensions there. But recent news has come along that the U.S. consumer is still very strong, and that may fuel economic activity. However, in contrast to that, the U.S. consumer is doing very well, and buying a lot of fueling a lot of economic activity, and so that's... something else that's happening in contrast to the other news. So I'm reading this article from the New York Times. Stock market rallies showing resilience of consumers. Shares of Target and Lowe's surged after strong earnings results, the latest companies to surpass the downbeat expectations of analysts. Retail stocks shot higher on Wednesday after upbeat earnings reports suggest consumer spending, the engine of the American economy, is still holding up even as the global economy struggles. Two large retailers, Target and Lowe's, reported second quarter profits on Wednesday that beat analysts' expectations, throwing cold water on the view that a global industrial slump was beginning to bleed into the broader American economy. A lot of people were thinking, gosh, is the American consumer going to be slowing down their spending, said King Lip, chief strategist at the wealth management firm Baker Avenue. But the reality is that that's not really the case. Stocks of consumer-focused companies led the S&P 500, which finished the day up 0.8%. Target jumped 20.4%, and the home improvement chain Lowe's rose 10.4%, making them the two best-performing stocks in the S&P 500. Retail stocks dominated that list on Wednesday. Nordstrom rose 5.5%, Kohl's jumped 4.9%, and Gap rose 4%. The retail rally pushed stocks in their fourth consecutive gain in... Blech. The retail rally pushed stocks to their fourth gain of the last five trading sessions, suggesting investors were shaking off some of the jitters that burned markets this month. Stocks have struggled since the start of August, when the last trade truce between China and the United States fell apart. The S&P 500 dropped 1% last week, when markets were wisp... when markets were whipsawed by the updates on the fight and its growing effect on the global economy. The S&P 500 is down 1.9% in August, though it remains up 1.6%... though it remains up 16.7% in 2019. Evidence has been gathering that conflict over trade technology and economic hegemony has been weighing heavily on some countries that rely on industrial exports. Germany's trade-heavy economy, the largest in Europe, contracted in the second quarter, raising the question of whether the country is on the verge of recession. A separate report showed Chinese industrial production grew at its slowest pace in 17 years. In the United States, a report on industrial production last week showed that manufacturing output declined in July, compared with the same period last year. Yields on long-term treasury securities plummeted last week, pushing them even further below shorter-term yields. The unusual bond market situation, known as an inversion, unnerved investors because they have proved reliable harbingers of recession in the past. It also raised concerns that global weakness could be bleeding into the American economy. 
But the recent numbers from top American retailers tell a different story. Last week, Walmart reported better than expected profit and sales and raised its full year profit outlook. Home Depot on Tuesday also bested the earnings expectation of analysts and held firm to its previous profit forecast for 2019. Share prices of both companies jumped at the announcements. The earnings reports from Target and Lowe's confirmed the trend. No issue is more important for the American economy than the health of its consumers. Consumption accounts for over two-thirds of American gross domestic product. And consumers have only been... And consumers have only become more important recently amid signs of sluggishness elsewhere in the American economy. Home building, exports, and business investment all shrank during the second quarter, leaving consumption, which grew at a 4.3% annual pace, as the key driver of growth. Many analysts see good reasons to expect that the American... Many analysts see good reasons to expect that Americans will continue to open their wallets. At 3.7%, unemployment is near 50-year lows. Wages have posted some of their fastest increases of the economic expansion over last year. Consumer debt levels are high, but low interest rates mean that households are having little trouble making their payments. That backdrop has helped muffle the effects of noisy trade fight. <laughs> that backdrop has helped muffle the effects of the noisy trade fight between Beijing and Washington and has had that backdrop has helped muffle the effects the noisy trade fight between Beijing and Washington has had on American consumers. Despite all these tariffs and despite all this rhetoric, they continue spending, said J. Michael Gibbs, Director of Portfolio and Technical Strategy at Raymond James in Memphis. So it seems that the strong effect of U.S. consumers may be balancing out the downward effects may be balancing out the bad effects U.S. trade tensions are having on U.S. exports and industry. And, I mean, if things go well, the U.S. consumers could completely counter the effects of bad Chinese demand on industry and allow the U.S. economy to power through these trade tensions. And that could especially be the case if, like the Fed continues easing, powering U.S. demand, allowing industry to adjust from bad China demand and exports to being powered by U.S. consumption. So, I mean, we'll see if that's the case. I mean, the strong U.S. consumer sending is a good sign, and that's on the back of, like, strong income growth over the last couple of years. So I think that's all there is on the topic. Uh... So I think that's it. Okay.